Uh, it's meant to be for kick drums. Um, but I use it on the floor tom here for the 16. And then on the snare drum, on the top and bottom, I have an SM57. So, oh, and there is one more microphone. That guy is another CAD micro condenser mic right here to capture the ride and the second set of hats. Okay, moving on. Oh, yeah, and then you got my in ear pack here. So there's again Phoenix Audio, this is the belt pack receiver. And you got my in ears. Um, been experimenting with different ears, and right now I'm using the KZ. Uh, AS10s, I believe. They're five drivers per ear with uh, foam tips. And then I got an upgraded uh, cable here made by uh, Yinyu. Uh, very, very nice cable. It's got this uh, adjustment bead to make the cables sit nice and um, close to your head rather than just flopping around. And I got this little uh, one foot. Um, headphone extension just because um, it was a little short for me uh, it come down my back I like to put my belt pack right in my front pocket so that was that so yeah those are my ears um, I like them sound really good um, so there's that and then you got my little table to the left uh, you know got various things to put drinks on there uh, my case for my in-ears um, some gels if I gotta put gels on the toms and uh, wrist exerciser, ball there, and spray bottle, just some other stuff, keys. Okay, so that is about it for audio. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need to go over with audio. I don't think there is. Oh, there is. I completely forgot. One of the other things I did was I put these guys in. These little boxes. You got one there. You got one over here next to the piano. Um, when I have people come over, I'm where we were plugging into the old board. Cables were running all over the middle of the floor. It was a nightmare. It was a mess. And I had enough. So I said, you know what? Let me get them out of the way. So I made these boxes again using Cat5 cable. And you can see it kind of goes up and over the door frame. But they both feed the board. They're both connected. And I got a little sheet that gives a layout of what it is. So you got three um, quarter inch outputs. And then four combo uh, quarter inch or XLR inputs. And then another XLR input here. And these are Neutrik uh, dual connectors. They got the locking push button thing, which I really like. In case we're playing and something happens and the cable happens to pull out. Uh, we're going to prevent that. As of right now, I got them on a wood um, face plate, but I'm eventually going to replace that with metal once I get my drill press. <laughs> so I needed a drill press, and I just used a uh, drill with a step drill to drill the holes for these guys here. But yeah, um, cable layout lays out um, the outputs and what channel they are on the board, and they go from there. Oh, let's go back to the board real quick. Because, uh, you know, that's, that's always a fun thing. So, just a little, little brief description um, of what I'm doing here with the board. Uh, let's see here. So, again, we're not listening anything through live amps. We're listening through uh, monitor mixes. And so, uh, here we go. You got my mix, uh, which is left and right. So that way I can get the panning effect of the drums in my ears, so I have to have a stereo output. And you got uh, my friend Nick, Pete, and you got a uh, bass mix, and then you got a keyboard mix, and then whatever else. Um, there are the effects. I'm still messing with the effects. I'm not so um, sure on that one there. But with that being said, though, this is my in ear mix. Um, I, again, I'm using 70 channels because the X32 is in layers. This is the first 16. It's all blue and everything's labeled. Uh, kick 1, right, sub right, kick 2, uh, kick left, sub left, snare drum, top, bottom, snare drum 2, 
Arrow Ruthens Leopold. Then if we go to 17 to 32, there's my um, 17th channel. And 18 is still blue, but that's the MP3. Remember I told you about the little white box there. That's that channel there. Then you got your guitars, and you got your keys, and then you got your vocals. And these are just blanked out. These aren't being used right now. But those are the channels. And yeah, so uh, absolutely love this board. Um, still got a long ways to go. Got a lot to learn on this guy. But I'm uh, really looking forward to it. A lot of a lot of fun to uh, sit behind this thing and mess with it, kind of get an idea of how it works and how it then gets routed and everything. So yeah, great board. Anyways, okay. So we've come down to the final stretch. Let's uh, go over the drums. Uh, we're approaching 40 minutes now. Let me grab a quick drink here. Okay. Here we go. So, first and foremost, the drums. The drums are um, a company, as far as I know, correct me if I'm wrong, but they are owned by Pearl Drums, but this is the Sound Percussion Labs uh, drum set. Uh, this drum set has been long now discontinued, but it is the... Um, they're, they're birch drums, the birch shells. Um, these they don't make these anymore. These come with suspension tom mounts, as you can see right here. It's suspension tom mounts. Uh, the, their newer drums are direct mount. They don't make the suspension mounts except for the little uh, small bebop kit, but only the the rack tom is a suspension mount. So yeah, I was very fortunate to uh, get the set. And originally, it came with the two kicks, a 10, 12, 13, 14, and 16. Um, this 8-inch didn't exist. That's actually a separate drum. That's actually a Pacific drums and percussion 8-inch uh, tom that I happened to get that had black hardware matched the whole nine yards, so I grabbed that. So that's the only foreign drum out of the entire set. Other than that, the entire set's uh, match a match set. Now cool thing about this is this finish was done by me and my fiance. We, um, it had a black plastic wrap on it and, um, did some outside gigs one day and the, the wrap started bubbling and it looked like crap. And I wanted to have a custom finish set anyway. So I said, you know what, let's make this a summer project. So over this, uh, a couple years ago, summer project, we stripped the drums, took the plastic wrap off, and then uh, took a blowtorch, and I burnt uh, burnt those details with a the blowtorch. Then took um, basically the same exact um, honey gold amber um, stain I used on that bass guitar. I uh, did that, but it's also shellacked as well, so it made it a little bit lighter. And I also finished the insides. I sealed the insides. And the result is what you see, and uh, got a lot of compliments on them. I think they look beautiful, they sound great, and uh, yeah. So let's go over more finer details. And everything's mounted on a rack. It is a generic wannabe Gibraltar rack, but it functions just like a Gibraltar rack, so it works really well. Uh, three sides is the true rack. You got the far left the front left and the front right, but the far right side I had to kind of jimmy rig. Um, it's actually a couple pieces of steel pipe and a couple 90 degree angle clamps, <laughs> but that holds up the right side. So it works for now. So that's that side. Uh, well, let's see here, and uh, here we are from the uh, back side, again, we saw, uh, this is a 13-inch orange um, county drums and percussion, uh, I believe it's ash. A beautiful, deep, 7-inch snare, a lot of crack to it. Um, really nice uh, drum to play and, you know, <laughs> drew a little, you know, I was probably a little drunk one night and drew that face on there. What the heck, why not? So, uh, there's that, and then... Um, Again, 13-inch on the left, 
8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 14 inch snare, two 22 inch kicks um, for the main kicks there. Um, I did put a die cast hoop on the top here, so it's kind of a Stuart Copeland um, hybrid. Uh, he has a signature stand with Tama, but his shell is made of metal. He has a steel shell, but he has a die cast hoop at the top and a triple flange on the bottom. So kind of a inspirational thing. I buy one and a die cast hoop on the top of the snare. So there's that. Um, I'm using a combination of Evans and Remo heads. I'm using the EC2 Frosteds, the level 360 for the tight heads, uh, uh, for my Tom heads. I love the way they sound. Um, I like the sound of a, fr of a coated head, but these aren't totally coated and frosted. Um, then they got the sound control ring on the edge, and they're a bit warmer. So I really like the sound of them. And I have uh, Emperors, clear Emperors on the bottoms. This uh, bass drum's um, got just a couple black heads on the front and Power Stroke threes on the bader sides. And then the snare drum, um, control, reversed controlled sound on the top, hazy on the bottom. And uh, well, this is the it's stock Orange County head. That's made by Remo, so coat of head on top, hazy on the bottom, and that's the drums. So uh, there's that uh, hardware, um, the mix, uh, Pearl, Gibraltar, SP sound percussion, whatnot. Uh, toys, we got a cowbell on the left, uh, lamp percussion tambourine. I'm sorry, uh, cowbell on the right, lamp percussion tambourine here on the left. And then we got a couple of uh, holders here. This holds uh, the phone that I'm on right now. And again, just streams wirelessly to the board. And then this will hold the iPad so I can control the board, have the iPad monitor right here and everything. Uh, okay, so let's get into. So oh, and oh, my rock and sock. <laughs> Can't forget my rock and sock uh, throne here, which is a beautiful, beautiful thing. It's like sitting in a recliner, it's so comfy. It's a hydraulic, and I added the uh, Gibraltar um, backrest, giving a little bit of back support here, and then both are, you know, crushed velvet lined, and really, really comfortable seat. Uh, see hardware on the bottom, using two Tama iron co oh, uh, two Tama speed cover pedals, and then the main hat is uh, the stock sound percussion hi hat stand, and then the remote hi hat, which is over here, is the hi hat stand that I made. Um, using a hi-hat stand I found at a second-hand shop and a bicycle shift cable. Uh, there's a YouTube video, I think, floating around somewhere on that, so watch to check that out. Okay, let's get into Symbol Land here. So I am a big-time Sabian guy. So 90% of the symbols are Sabians. So we're going to start from the left and move to the right. To the left, we have a modified 16-inch SBR crash. This is made out of brass, so it's a little, it's a lower end cymbal, but I like the way it sounds. I drilled several holes, kind of an inspired ozone effect into it. Can make it a little bit more darker and trashier. So there's that. Uh, these I love, the XSR series by Sabian, it's a newer line. Uh, these are their 14 inch hi-hats. Uh, I love the way these things sound. Uh, they can sound so clean and so dirty, it's great. Um, the only modification I made is I drilled two small holes to prevent airlock in the bottom symbol. But on that, it's just as is. Do you have a 14 inch B8 crash? And again, um, modified, I took... Um, a ball peen hammer and hammered a handful of dimples in to darken it up a little bit and uh, sounds really good so there's that and you got two splashes you got a B8 Pro 8 inch splash and a B8 10 inch splash and uh, here's where we come out of the Sabian zone this is a Minel um, bell you know because I uh, wanted a bell and yeah and I love the way it sounds nice bright and pingy and then uh, this guy here, this is the 18-inch XSR Fast Crash. Very, very loud, dirty, and responds very well. I like this guy. This is one of my favorite symbols here. And then uh, back down here is where my influence with Mike Portnoy comes back in. This is his signature medium 
Max Stacks, named after his son, Max Portnoy. And uh, so there's that. And then um, my ride. <laughs> so this is the Pro Sonics, long discontinued ride. Um, love the way it sounds. It's darker, it's dirty. It's uh, I love the bell on that thing, very defiant bell on that. And then the 13 inch um, SBR hats, which is the remote controlled set, that's the brass set there. And uh, that right there. <laughs> um, so this is the second thing that came from um, my old drum set, my old blue Apex drum set. This is my original um, take on a stack before I even knew what stacks are. <laughs> I took uh, a couple old cymbals, I think one's a Sabian, one's a Zildjian. Uh, took them to a bandsaw, cut a not-so-symmetrical hole, drilled a bunch of holes, and put them together. And I like the way it sounds, and... So it's different, and uh, that lives on, uh, part of the drum set. And then finally, you have a SBR, uh, I believe it's an 18-inch. Yeah, an 18-inch uh, China, and again, modified by drilling holes... Again, kind of inspired by the Chols, the Chad Smith, Holy China, but just not as many holes. So there's that. Uh, let's see here. What else? There's something else I was going to show you guys. Um, we've got a fan down here in the bottom. You know, keep me cool because the AC only does so much. Uh, oh, there was one thing I wanted to show you guys. And that is um, back here. Uh, my stick bag which is a coffin case, stick bag. I don't know if coffin case is still around, but holds all my extra sticks, hot rods, and whatnot. Uh, Vader percussion um, practice pad right there. And then uh, I got a stick holder, which holds a handful of extra sticks and everything. And then uh, here, my water shoes. Uh, I, 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 I wear these when I play. I don't wear normal shoes. I don't play, I don't play without shoes, but this is kind of the gap between the two. Gives me the grip and the flexibility that I need to play. So there's that. And I think that is it. I can't think of anything else, guys. Wow, we're approaching a little a little over 50 minutes. If you made it this far, hey, seriously, thank you. And you know, definitely leave some comments and uh, some good vibes. I'd appreciate it. All right, guys. Well, that's about going to do it for me. So uh, I will let you guys go. Thanks for watching. Keep rocking on.